All right, so um, I just instinctively picked up my phone. Let's do a video. So um, I just finished my second day of school. I'm back in school, guys. I'm back in Georgia, I'm back in school. But um, I am gonna just, I'm only taking two classes because I have the prereqs and the core classes for everything. Because I actually, uh, when I was in high school, I finished high school a year early and I went to college really early at the age of 17. Well, not really early, I went there at the age of 17. And then I stayed in school for a long time. So I actually have like 200 credits or something ridiculous. I think I graduated with like 170 because when I was in college, I took fun courses just for fun. And everyone asked me like, if you're a chemistry major, why the hell did you take accounting? Why did you take more history courses? Why did you take more economics? Why did you take anatomy? Those are like tough classes that people hate. But I was like, these are useful life skill things. Like, how are you gonna do your, like accounting really helps me learn how businesses work, how stores operate, inflation. They didn't teach me how to do taxes though. I got screwed last year. This year actually, but that's a different topic. Um, so I am now in Georgia, but the bright side is, um, I for the past few days I've been setting everything up. I have a workspace at home and it's only growing, it's only getting bigger. I still am getting supplies shipped to me, but a lot of my equipment and stuff is here. I moved here and it's, it was like a three day moving process between New York and Georgia, but I'm settling in slowly. Um, so I'm currently working on three projects, two of them are secret, um, and one of them is public. So I just want to address a few things. If you haven't gotten your prizes yet, it's because I've been moving and moving is a stressful process. You have to clean out your desk at work. You have to clean out your apartment. You have to settle out all those things like utilities, cancel things. And then you have to move your stuff physically. Unpacking and packing after like a year and a half worth of stuff um, that you've accumulated is actually, it's pretty hard. So um, if you haven't gotten your prizes, please contact me. So two people off the top of my head, I know Thinix, he didn't get his prize, even though I think I shipped it to him. Uh, I think there's a few issues. Um, so what I'm gonna do is like, I'm gonna work everything out tonight, hopefully. If, if, if everything isn't worked out tonight, then, um, then email me. Um, I've been kind of stressed out, so I haven't been checking my emails. Um, but yeah, so uh, now that's out of the way. Um, well, let me say, talk a little bit more about this next project. So, in half a mile, turn right to merge on turn 85 south. Uh, about the nitride coated cubes. Uh, I have one sent to Juan Pablo. International shipping takes a while, so that's gonna be on the way. Uh, I did a contest, the winner of that was LH Cuber. So, LH Cuber, yours is on the way. I have another thing to ship you, but it turns out I didn't bring one of the things I needed to make that cube down to Georgia. So I'm gonna contact you directly and we'll get you. But if you wanna know about how nitride cubes feel, check out those two channels, Juan Pablo and LH Cuber. So my next project is gonna be another project dealing with the plastic. So if nitride made the cubes stupidly fast, I don't know what I was thinking, trying to drop the friction even more. This next project, it's gonna be changing the plastic again, except in a different way. So we'll see how that happens when that ha goes out. Um, turn right to merge on turn 85 Chemicals and south. stuff should arrive in a week. Um, in half a mile, keep left to merge on turn 85 Like glass south and equipment should also arrive next week. So maybe a month for that project to finish. Yeah, there's a lot of time that needs to be taken with experimentation, but it's going to be similar to the nitride process. Um, now that we've proven that that works, we can try other solids. There's carbide, um, anything that's like micron or submicron scale, we can Keep now impregnate to into Rubik's cubes. South towards so, Atlanta. Um, I'm just gonna talk about Lubical Black and uh, the magnetic square ones. So the magnetic square ones, the infrastructure is now put into place. I've taught people how. Um, my successor knows how to do it. Uh, we're gonna hopefully get that out soon. I'm gonna try to fast track that with the office. But the supplies are there, everything's there. We're gonna try to get that soon for everyone. So I've gotten messages. 
I'm really excited for people to try that out. Um, so, Lubuco Black. So, just to tie it up, I'm gonna talk some chemistry while I'm driving, and uh, it'll be good. So, if you missed what I was talking about at In Nationals... 11 miles, take exit 95A to merge onto I-285 east towards Augusta. Lubuco Black is a suspension of molybdenum disulfide, and this molybdenum disulfide it's in the micron range. So just to explain a little bit about material science, uh, properties, bulk properties of materials change when they go really, really small. So like, um, uh, one example is uh, when you get gold particles down to the nanoscale, it actually starts diffracting light really weird because the particles begin to approach the wavelength of the uh, waves that are moving. And that's when you get into things called metamaterials. Um, we're not quite there yet, but the nitride, we were close. The nitride was a uh, nanometers long, but um, Lubuco Black is in the single digit micron range, give or take. So what happens at that range is um, it's fully dispersed throughout the whole silicone. So it's also a silicone based lube, but once it touches a, sub a surface, that molybdenum disulfide is going to rub into the surface and this is something you can empirically see on the on the macro scale you'll see that the luster changes it becomes more lustrous and it is not graphite but you might be thinking to yourself it's real similar to graphite that's because graphite and molybdenum disulfide have similar molecule shapes and this is also something I mentioned in passing in my nitride video so Graphite is just sheets that are hexagonal of molecules. And because of the way their bonds are directed, you have something, there's a lot of ways to call this. These bonds are conjugated, they have their pi bonds, it's an aromatic system, uh, similar to that. So all of the electron density is like up or down with the sheet. And you have something called, uh, this is pronounced differently in different regions, anisotropy or anisotropy. Um, which basically means when these sheets, when they're stacked right on top of each other, those electrons are going to repel. Um, and because of that, at the very molecular level of things, you have friction reduction. So with all of these sheets sliding around against each other, you see a really big drastic reduction of, uh, of friction, and that's because of the electron density. So. When you go through the textbooks and stuff, for metal on plastic surfaces, molybdenum disulfide is one of the best. When you have hard metal surfaces, this is one of the best lubes to do it. So at first I was thinking about doing this, but I canceled the idea because it just stained too much. But I talked with Phil and Phil was like, we need a core lube. And I was like, all right, let's resurrect it. So we found, I did a few test batches. We got a good one. Uh, they're all good, but we wanted the viscosity at a certain point. Um, and we're, we're golden. So people are talking about the staining. Well, there's a lot of easy cures to the staining. Um, and I'm gonna explain the whole reason why it stains. So you're gonna learn about things called phases in college. So you, you noticed how oil and water don't mix? Um, they're in different phases. So it, there are many more phases than just oil and water. So water is aqueous phase. Your organic solvent, oil, is an organic phase. And the silicone is silicon-based. It's in a silicone phase. Since the molybdenum is in the silicone phase, it's tough to get out because that's not miscible with water or organic solvents. Similarly, when organic solvents which are carbon-based, they're not miscible with silicon-based. So what you get here is something that soap is going to have a hard time washing out. Water, sure as hell, is not going to wash it out. So what you need is rub silicone on the on to the lubrical black stains and they'll come right out. So what I suggest is like low viscosity, so wait one. Okay, so my SD card ran out, so I'm gonna have to tie this up. I deleted some videos real fast. I only have like a few seconds, like two minutes. So uh, lubrical one, light silicone oils. Uh, I don't know other brands. I just use cubical stuff for obvious reasons. Um, but those will get lubrical black out all completely because silicone with silicone is in phase as long as you have an inorganic solvent to wash it out because obviously you have to use something 
to get it out. We learned in school, like dissolves like. Um, it's the same reason you can't wash uh, oil out with just water, you have to use soap. You have to use an inorganic phase to wash out an inorganic phase. So lubrical black, if you just know those things and you keep that in mind, it's a great lube. And some people have asked if you use it on pieces, you could, and it would just be like the same thing as using 50K, except when you break it in, it gets it gets faster. And it's also a little messy on the pieces. But like I said, if it's ever on something, use silicone to get it out. I find that Lubrical 1 gets it out the best because it's the lowest viscosity. And when I get it on my hands, I can just wash it out. But I, I just leave it there because it doesn't hurt. So, uh, thanks as always, thanks for watching. And I hope to do even more projects down here in the south because I have a lot of time um, outside of classes. And honestly, I could have exempted these classes, but I took them anyway for the GPA boost. So, I'll talk to you guys next video.